Hey, Carson. Thank Hello. you for coming today and being with me. Are you getting ready for the fair? Yeah, getting there. Get well, I'm really glad that you could come today and spend a little bit of time with us and share with us um, some things. You've been very successful in this project. And let's go back and start some basics like who you are and who your parents are and what club you belong to and, and anything else that you'd like to share with us. So I'm Carson Taylor and this is my eighth year in 4-H and my eighth year in the Food Preservation Project. And my parents are Carol and Chris Taylor and I go to the Clover Power 4-H Club. Is that at Meriden? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, last year, I remember you had the grand champion at the county fair. What project did you have that uh, won those honors? I had the cherry pie filling. Cherry pie filling. Mm -hmm. And it went on to state fair. And how did it do at the state fair? I got a and I asked you to bring that product in. And what happened to that cherry pie filling? And most of it got eaten. I was kind of glad to hear that because we make it to use it instead of keeping it on the shelf. So anyway, Carson, I am really pleased uh, about that. Um, and thank you for coming and sharing some tips with us. And what are some things that we need to remember when preparing our food uh, preservation exhibits for the fair? You want to read the fair book? and then read it again because there's so many things that you can miss just reading it over at once. There's two places that you can find the fair book. You can uh, get a printed copy of it. Uh, is there an important deadline you need to remember when entering your products, any 4-H projects for the Jefferson County 4-H Fair? July 1. July 1st, that's right. And my advice to any 4 -er, whether it be food preservation or not, if you think you might uh, want to enter food preservation or any 4 -er project, go ahead and enter it. And you don't get it done, it's okay. Um, but if you get it done and you don't pre-enter it, then you have more of a problem. And so we're going to be moving into our kitchen. Uh, Carson has brought some things and he's going to be showing us some things about how to get your jars and food preservation ready for the fair. So Carson has joined us in our kitchen here and he has some tips and ideas to share with us. So Carson, would you want to share with us what you have right there? This is the fair book and it's always good to read through a couple times. I like to put a sticky note where the food preservation is because there's always there always might be changes in the book and um what is one thing we want to remember about preserving food from last year to this year carson when is the cutoff date that i can start using food preservation for this year right after the last year so if you've had that product judged before you cannot use it again where do we get ideas as far as resources that we can use for our food preservation there are books they can get the full blue book. Some of the, it's one of the best, if not the best, ways to preserve what some different recipes are. And a lot of times I will have people say, well, I have grandma's recipe from 1984. And so that recipe would be considered outdated. Because in 1994, they went through and did testing on it. And so those recipes may or may not be safe anymore. And so without testing, we don't know. There's also other important recipes and we can turn to the fair book and um, it will give you ideas of other resources. As a general rule of thumb, any university extension resources are um, USDA tested recipes and acceptable to use. Well, you mentioned something else. What if I have a ball, uh, Mrs. Wages or... Um, well, um, mixes. What do I do about those? Bring the package that I came in because they might be cooked differently than other of the same homemade. The packages might have to have a different headspace and the judge may not be familiar with that. So you bring the package to show that it's the right headspace. You also want to uh, document the date that you purchased it with. Can you tell um, what the headspace is on our jars there? So this jar should have a headspace of one inch, and it does. Okay, and let's take the screw band off here. And these are green beans that you canned, I assumed. And 
for green beans or low acid vegetables, it's always good to check the headspace. It needs to be appropriate so um, it seals correctly. And you can use a seam gauge or a bubble freer has a, a stair step and it will give you, uh, help you to give the appropriate headspace on it. And what else do we want to look for on our jars and things? You want them to be clean, okay? You want, you, if you really want to be nitpicky, you can always line the jar labels, the names are lined up. Um, you don't want, you want to have a nice, clean, brand new seal. Uh, not flat. You also don't want rust in your rim. It's easy to overlook having a screw band, so bringing an extra one is a good idea. You also don't want a damaged flat. They can have dents or scratches. Okay. You do not want to have a dent or a scratch in your flat. Yeah. Well, this is your label. It has your number for your class, and you have it has your product. That's where you put the name. You also have your name and what district you come from. You want to put where the altitude that you process it at, okay. not where you live at, because you might have processed it at your grandma's house in a different area. And you also want to put your time you processed it for, not the time that it says it should be processed for. So if you processed it for 15 minutes because you were above altitude, you want to put 15 minutes and not 10 minutes. Being a thousand and over, you have to adjust for the altitude. I have a nice little chart here, and it's for the surrounding counties like Atchison, Brown, Jackson, Donovan, Jefferson, and Nemaha County, and for the different areas. And, and it's kind of by zip code there. So it's a handy little resource that you can ask me for when judging, and I take this along to use. You can also check the website um, or ask your uh, city hall what your uh, altitude is. What the altitude where processed and then the processing time, so if the recipe said 10 minutes plus five for the altitude for a total of 15 minutes. And you put it on the label plus you put it on the recipe that you include with that. So there is never a doubt that this recipe has been adjusted. The canning method, you always wanna circle the one that you use some processed foods want to be pressure pressure canned, or not water bath, because you won't get the right seal. When you do pressure on here, there's two choices. Did you use a dial gauge, or did you use a weighted gauge? We used a dial gauge. Okay, so what's this last part down here? It's on... the date that you processed it. And okay. The month and you want to go about cleaning that jar. So always dust it off if it's been made for a little bit. And you can always go over your thing of water, put water in a jar and a pitcher, and you add just a half cup of vinegar. And then you will take your jar, dip it in the vinegar and water solution, and you will take it out, make sure to get some on the lid, clean the lid, dry it off thoroughly. This will get any water stains off and this will also help you clean this area. You always want to clean this area of the jar. Hope that you've enjoyed it. I appreciate Carson coming and spending his time and his tips with you and if you have any more questions feel free to give me a call. I'm happy to share or give you uh, answer any questions that you might have and thanks again Carson for all your wonderful tips and ideas. Read that fair book. And if you can't, that doesn't answer your question, give me a call.